On October 28th through November 14th, 1925, David Curtis Stevenson was put on trial for the murder of Madge Oberholzer. Also put on trial were Earl Gentry and Earl Clink. The chief defense lawyers were Floyd Christian, Ira W. Holmes, and F. Inman. The people prosecuting the case were Charles E. Cox, Ralph Kane, and William H. Remy. The presiding judge was Will M. Sparks. And this all took place in Noblesville, Indiana. In the case, Madge had testified that she had been brutally beaten, raped, and abused by David Stevenson. She also said, quote, He chewed me all over my body, particularly my neck and face. He chewed, me, chewed my tongue, he chewed my breast until they bled, my back, my legs, my ankles, and mutilated me all over. In the prosecution's defense, they had Madge's death declaration swearing that all she said was true. They also had expert witness testimony clarifying that Madge died due to a staphylococcus infection because of the wounds Stevenson administered to her body. Throughout the case, it was questioned whether or not Madge had intentionally gone to Stevenson's house and complied with the situation. One fateful night, Madge arrived at Stevenson's house to find him drunk in his kitchen. She was then forced by Earl Clayton, Earl Gentry, and Stevenson to drink a liquid which impaired her physically. A boarder had been in the Oberholzer's house when Madge was returned home by Mr. Clayton. He testified that Clink said that Madge had been in a severe car accident and that Clink was just returning her home. The very next morning, Mr. Clink took her home. On November 14, 1925, after six hours of deliberation, the jury had found David Curtis guilty of sexual murder and sentenced to life. After 25 years of being in prison, David Stevenson was released for following prison orders. But because he did not visit his parole officer for an entire year, he was then put back in prison. In 1956, David Curtis Stevenson was released from prison for the last time. He later died in 1964 of Freeman.